Hello everyone, it's Laurie at artitdesigns.ca. I'm going to show you today how you can do this retro text effect in Inkscape. So this looks pretty good on a t-shirt. I've done an example for Kona, Hawaii. Pretty cool place uh, I've actually been to. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce my Inkscape beginner course. Here, I'm going to explain in detail all the tools, the tool sets, and features in the Inkscape program. I'll explain what they are, how to use them, and why we use them. If you'd like to check that out, I'll have a link to that in the description. So let's get started. We'll come down here and we're going to grab the text tool. Click the A, click on the screen, and I'm just going to write retro. You can write whatever you like. Press shift and control. We'll scale this up nice and big so we can see it. We'll open the T menu. And Smokem is the font I chose. This is a slab serif. Um, I didn't used to be a fan of this one, but I'm kind of growing. It's kind of growing on me. I'm going to click apply and I'm going to close out of this menu. I'm going to scale it up, shift and control, and I want to finalize this text. So path, object to path, and now we finalized it into an editable, uh, editable, edit, editable thing. It's in a group of five, so we need to ungroup it. So now we have five objects. I'm going to go path and union to make it all one object. So now we need to play with the nodes. So if I go to the nodes tool, you'll see that there is an awful lot of nodes on this font. You'll also notice that some of the characteristics of this font make it so that it's not really even on the bottom. That's okay. Um, it gives it its whimsical characteristics or whatever. So first thing I'm going to do is grab a guide. I'm just going to pull one down from here. And this will serve as the length that each of these letters will be. So maybe we'll go about that far. Now you can grab a bunch at, at the same time, but I'm going to do the first couple individually because this one's a bit trickier. So I'm just going to draw a box over these two nodes and then I'm going to press control so it goes nice and straight. I'm going to pop it down here and you can eyeball it or you can turn on these snapping tools here. So enable snapping and we want it to snap to guides. Where's guides? Right there. Okay, now this one's trickier because we don't want to distort the curves here. So we need to select higher. We need to select all of those nodes right here. And then I'll just select this one, press control and drag down. And it should snap, but if we zoom in here, it's gone too far. So we'll just snap it up a little bit. Okay, so now these three, I can select all of them because it's pretty easy to select them all and then I'll just select this node, press control and drag them all down. So nice and super fast. And these ones, yeah, I'll have to do these individually because this node's higher. Um, might even, we might not even need to, to grab this node, but I probably will anyway. So we'll select this these objects here, just draw a box over all of those nodes, press control and drag them down. And then we'll select carefully. So make sure you do not grab anything on this side and then just press control and drag these down. I might turn that off actually. It's not really working how I want it to. Press control and drag it down. Just eyeball it. Okay. Now we don't need our guide anymore so I'm just going to hover over this. Press delete. And then what I want to do is grab a rectangle. I'm going to click and drag a rectangle across. Let's turn it, uh, I'll turn it this red color for now. Then we're going to position it. So the idea here is this will be the smaller piece. This will be the second bigger piece and then this will be larger. So I'm just going to scale it in a little bit and position it how I think it'll look really good. Okay, I'll just go with that. Now, we want to put pieces of this red on top of the retro object. So to do that, we will press Control D, select the uh, retro, Control D to duplicate it. Now it's on top. Let's turn it green just so we know what we're doing here. Press Shift and select the red object. And we'll go Path, Intersection. That gives us the intersecting pieces of the duplicate copy. Now, this is what we have. I press Control Z to put that back. What I want to do is divide this. So I'm going to select everything. We'll go path, division. Okay, so now it's all in one piece, but you'll also notice that for whatever reason, it chose this R to 
to break it apart. That's what a break apart actually does. Why it didn't happen to this one or this one is beyond me. I don't know why. Uh, I'll click off the graphic here and you'll see that I can't select it because it's underneath. So I'm just going to draw a box to select that object. I'll turn it green and then I'll come up here to raise it to the top. And then I'll press shift and select the remainder of this retro object. And I'll go path in difference. Okay, so now we've punched our hole back in. Okay, so let's select all these middle objects. I'm going to turn them nice bright orange here. I'll select the top retro here, turn it red and yellow, nice bright yellow. Okay, so that is, is that everything? That is pretty much how you can create this graphic using Inkscape. Makes a great t-shirt design or whatever. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the tutorial.